Hello there! I'm George from Pavlicek Studios and I'll be making a marble today out of glass. I'll be using Moretti glass rods and dichroic sheet glass to make a marble that's a black center with dichroic stripes that I'll twist around and it will all be covered in clear. I'm going to get my tanks going and we will get started. Turning my oxygen up. I use 250 cubic foot oxygen tanks uh, that are called K tanks. I used to use T tanks, which were 350 cubic feet, uh, but those are taller and don't fit in all vehicles. Uh, so, in general, the K tanks will fit in your car in a couple different ways. I like to use um, a station wagon or my truck to get those. That's something we could uh, talk about if you are ever looking to get into glass working more and or taking any of my classes, which I don't have any scheduled right now, um, but I do. Um, I'm open to suggestions for what we can demonstrate here on our Wednesday night demonstration. All right, let me grab my glasses. I think the torch is all set. It's gas pressure, yes, we're good to go. All right, I'm gonna light my propane. Then I'm gonna turn on my oxygen for a neutral flame. I'm going to start small today, doing just a few tiny canes, and we're going to make a little itsy bitsy marbles out of those, because I need a bunch of those. So I'm going to take a gray rod, and some of my, uh, this is the glass that all the lamp work that I make that gets recycled gets turned into these. Uh, clear rods. They end up being like light blue with little tiny bubbles and sparkles in them, which makes them great for handles or cores of marbles or cores of beads. Or um, if you're just using those handles, generally you take a little bit off each time to get a clean surface. So it gets used up. Um, I like having them on my bench just for that reason. They're a little stiffer than a lot of your um, fresher glass rods that you've only used once. Which, once you know that, it's fine. What I'm going to do is just draw a few threads with the base glass being this recycled uh, pale blue and some of this opaque gray on the surface. And what I want to get essentially it's a little tiny marble that looks like a planet and I'm going for something moon uh, moon in the sky full moon type look that's going to go on some of my celestial glass which is uh, a dark background glass that's been painted with enamel powders and has some blown glass elements on it. So I've just added a little slug of the gray glass onto the clear glass. I'm going to melt those together and then I'm going to twist it, pulling it into a thread. You can see they're starting to merge. I'll show that in the magnifying glass. I kind of made it all crickety trying to show you. So I'm going to heat it up and get it even. And when it's really hot, I let it rest for a second, and then I'm going to start twisting it. One hand in one way, one hand in the other way, and then I'm going to stretch as I twist. I'm getting longer. And it ended up being pretty weird on the ends. I uh, got cold. You can see actually kind of cool, but I want this part more in the middle, 
and it really didn't twist up very nice. So let's get that piece off. I'll show the other end where it twisted more nicely. Usually I'll make a bunch of these in a row, and so they'll come out uh, better as I've kind of warmed up a little bit. So I don't have to hold this with the tweezers. What I'm going to do is get a little piece of this glass hot, and I'm going to drop it into one of my hemispherical graphite marble bowls. And this is not the use that they were intended for. But when it drops in there, I'm going to spin it around like this until it firms up. Then, usually I have a, a little tray that I can put it into. But let's just show you what it looks like. A little tiny marble. Hard to see. Wow, that's cool. Let's do another one. <laughs> Jiggling it. It's actually swirling around in there. As it firms up, you can hear it start making a sound. It's ready. And it was so ready, it flew right out of there. So I wasn't paying attention. And here it is. Again, a little tiny squirrel marble. That might look cool as a little moon. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. I'll try some. All right, I'm going to just set those aside for now. A lot of times I'll just make like hundreds of those in the afternoon. Get in the groove, sort of do it. All right, let's put those away. I'll come back to those. Now we're going to make our dichroic marble. And you've seen me get gathers in a couple different ways. I'm going to go back to a way that's very um, basic. So when you first start making marbles, you'll take little pieces of rod and cut like one inch sections. This works great for getting a gather of glass quickly. And if you get all these little rod pieces, different colors and you melt them together and you twist them around. It makes a cool looking marble. You know, especially if you're just practicing getting the shape. You're not so concerned about the design elements yet. You just want to get some glass together and make some balls. That's fun. Um, and there's so much inspiration from machine made marbles. Uh, everyone has named their favorite color combinations. You can use combinations of transparent and opaque. So fun. Anyway, so this method of getting a gather, I'm having a central rod, and I'm going to make a hexagonal packed array of those little rod bits around the rod itself. So there'll be six pieces around that main rod. What we'll do is we'll just get the end hot. I'm flashing it right now to bring the temperature up gradually. If I just stuck it in there, chips would fly everywhere. So I got the end hot. I'm going to get the end of this other piece hot and then let's put them together. Now, I'm just going to do that a couple more times. I'm going to attach and bend into place. See so the central rod's pretty hot. Those other pieces are kind of cool. I'm going to keep them, keep them warm just so that they don't start cracking. This is really kind of a, a feel thing. It's easy to lose pieces of the rod. If you're not careful, you heat the rod too rapidly or you let it get too cold. It's great practice, actually, for controlling your heat in the glass and getting the feel of how all these glass rods take heat in various ways. Um, once you get more precise about the way you want to 
put your gather together or your design together. I find I don't use this method very often, but it's fun to go back to it now and again. So I got all the pieces on there. Pretty fun. Now I'm going to heat the end and I'm going to push those little ends together so that they become more cohesive. I'm going to push them from the center of each rod into the center of the central rod. What I mean by that is I'm going to take a little poke from like right here, let's see if I can demonstrate it, and poke it into the center of the rod like that. And what's happening there is I'm taking that air that's trapped between the rod sections and pushing it out. Trapping air is uh, okay. For certain designs, you may not want it in there. I am medium picky about trapping air. Sometimes it's, I'm picky about it, other times I'm not. So sometimes I'm very lazy about it, and other times I'm super picky about it. Like, <laughs> I'm going to use the marble mold to start rounding that end out since I pushed all the air out of that end. To a smaller marble mold that more approximates the diameter of what I'm getting here. Alright, I've closed that end up. Now I'm going to work my heat back from where I've actually melted the rods together back and march that heat back towards the end of the tails. And then I'm going to, as the tails get warm enough to push around, I'm going to push them onto the central rod. And as we've been talking, I have been marching that heat back towards the tails. I don't want them to fly loose. I want them to stay down by the central rod. All right, I've gone around and pushed those rod ends down just a little. Push them down a little bit firmer without melting my central rod and making it swing around like a drunken sailor. Now that I've got the tail ends melted down, I'm going to get the whole thing really hot. And I'm going to push at an angle from the tip to the back, pushing the air out from between those uh, gathered rods. You can just smash them together. That's, that's fine. I don't want to trap air in there to make a bubble later. Um, just as good practice, good methodology for me. You do it whatever way you want. It'll be, it'll be fine. I've got this pretty hot. I'm going to do my first push. I'm using the marble plate, the graphite marble plate next to me, and a graphic graphite paddle, which is like a mini flying marble plate magic. Let's squish it together. So I'm rolling it and squishing it, and I've pushed all the air out. Now let's melt it together. Now I'm approximating the shape that I wanted to end up at, which is why this technique is really nice for this marble. It's a dichroic marble, so I'm taking a core of black, I'm laying pieces of pre-cut dichroic glass that's compatible with this core, and this clear glass that I'm going to put over top. I'm going to shape this center into a hexagonal cylinder so that I can put six pieces of dichroic on there, and then I'm going to skim coat it like a plasterer with clear glass. Alright, so I melted that together. It's getting very smooth, so now I'm going to roll it into a cylinder get it pretty cylindrical, and I'm going to switch from a glass rod to a steel punty. So I'm going to roll this and flatten the end for my attachment point. Let's see what that looks like in a second. I'm going to switch to a little bit bigger graphite paddle. That tiny one was just too tiny. I couldn't do a full roll all the way around, so I switched to a slightly larger. And there's what that cylinder looks like at flat the end. Now let's switch off. I'm going to switch to a large steel punting. When I say large, not glass blowing large, lamp working large. 
my small size so it's more like a sixteenth or three millimeters. Jumping up to a five or a eighth inch, whatever. I'm not measuring them, just grabbing them. <laughs> so I got that all that whole thing pretty hot. I'm going to concentrate on the end a little bit. Get that orange hot, hot enough to bore into the surface of the glass and give me a really solid attachment point because I got some work to do on this thing. Um, I'm going to change the shape. I'm going to be attaching pieces of dipro glass to it. Then I got all kinds of uh, clear casing that I want to do on this, and then there's just buttloads of twisting and end cleaning and. It'll be fun. Over before you know it. Just like having your appendix out. Listen to the melodious sound of my voice. Watch the pretty colors. Bam. Marvel's done. We'll see. That metaphor did not come out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> All right, that's hot. I'm going to start shaping it up like a cylinder a little bit more. Cleaning up that end. Had a little wild Smurf hat on it. Now it's a little bit better. Wild Smurf hat. You know, that curly, pointy, amorphous, yet telling shape. Smurf hat. All right, we've heated up the cylinder a little bit more. I'm going to try to improve the cylinder a little bit better before I switch to changing it to a hexagon. And there we go. Taking it to a cylinder. The cylinder became a little bit oval as my initial press was a little bit too much pressure. My glass was a bit mushier than I was expecting. So let's go back again and see if we can fix that ovalness. And we did. It looks weird shaped, but it's actually pretty good. All right, now I'm going to change the shape of this glass cylinder to a hexagonal cylinder to be ready to accept the dichroic strips of glass that I've cut to fit on there. And then uh, once I have all those in place, I have a larger diameter clear rod that I'm gonna case those rods with. I'm gonna case them in a particular way to prevent air from being trapped. But first, let's shape this cylinder into a hexagonal cylinder. a hexagonal cylinder. Now I have two different colors of dichroic glass that I showed during the pre-show. They're pieces like this. They're about a quarter inch by one inch long. And they're going to go on those flat areas right there. So I'm going to heat the back part of this sheet glass and I'm going to heat one of the flat areas of the hexagonal cylinder. I'm going to touch and push and get that dichroic piece of glass attached like that. Then I'm going to switch to an alternate color. Go to my next attachment. Watch. Let's go to the next one. Couldn't remember if I was going clockwise or counterclockwise there for a second. I had to let it cool down for a second to check my colors. Put three on there. Let's hit the next one. Next, I was doing blue and yellow. 
I don't know what colors these are going to come out like afterwards. I'm going to keep this whole cylinder with the die coat on it warm, but not moving warm, just warm enough so that I'm not burning off the dichroic. Alright. Get my last piece on there. Keep right in that little trough that remains the sixth Now I'm going to go to the free end where my attachment is not made yet and just make sure those ends are melted and push them into the bed that I made for them, those flat areas right there. Alright, now I can start casing it with clear. First thing I'm going to do is protect my dichro. I'm going to take little swipes over the surface of the dichro with this clear rod. If you see me switching hands and getting a tweezer on this clear rod, it's because it had a cut end, and sometimes the first heat on a cut end, there's oil from the cutter in there or some other impurities that make scum on the end. It might be too difficult to see. Anyway, I'm going to get my third arm in there and piece that off. And now the end of that clear rod is clean and nice. So I'm not, normally when I'm getting gathers from these clear rods, you see me get a, a large ball on the end. So I'm getting a, a lot of volume, which is why I use a larger rod. So I'm going to go a little bit smaller here and get the gather hot, but not big. And then I'm just going to cover the surface of that dichroic. Like that. There's, you can see it from this side. All right, let's do that a couple more times. So I want to leave the clear. I don't want to wipe off the dichro coating on this black glass. That's three down, three to go for the covering of the dichro. And just waiting on the sixth one, there's also a close up of that dichro cased with the clear. There's the uncased one right there, looking all naked, getting a little crackly from being exposed to the heat. And now, there they all are covered. Now I have to case the marble in between all of those stripes. So for this, I'm going to get a bigger clear gather, and I'm going to fill those grooves with clear glass. And I can start to heat up my cylinder and my dichro that's cased a little more strongly now. And I case that first one, I pushed it so that no bubbles got trapped in there. When I say I pushed it, I pushed it down that valley. 
I had enough clear glass on my gather, you can see it okay, sort of there, it's flopping around, that I can sort of ooze it in there and then press it and chase it through that valley and fill the roof. That way we won't have any random bubbles between our lines of dichroic glass. If I was to then, if I had my furnace going and I wanted to make this marble bigger, and I would, uh, once it was, the design was cleaned up, I would dip it again in clear glass, the bubbles, any imperfections would be magnified. So you'd want to have a really good base before you added more clear glass on top of it. And we might demonstrate some of those. A lot of those uh, days when we have the crucible furnace going, they're really long days, and by this time of the day, my annealing ovens would be full closing up. But you got to work on those until your annealing oven's full or you're tired or you start running out of stuff because if that furnace is going, you want to take advantage of all the energy that you put in there to melt that glass and keep it hot. But a lot of the uh, fiddly designs that uh, I work on, uh, it's a lot of time in the torch and then maybe just one or two gathers in the furnace at the beginning or the end of the marble. So it's not like a production line where you're cranking out giant canes that you pinch off marbles. They're still one-offs. There's plenty of other people out there who do the spitting out the canes. They don't need me messing around in their backyard. I'll do my weird one-offs. I think that's cool. All right, so everything's case now. Oh, here, I'll put it in the camera, <laughs> not just hold it off. Oh, look at that, it's really nice. <laughs> Now that <laughs> I've cased all those little grooves, it's a nice size. My end is kind of open. So I'm going to heat that end, this heel, and I'm going to pull the die crow, reach through the clear, and poke it down to a point on this end. Then I'm going to squeeze the end down with a glass working jacks. I'm using barber scissors because I'm this is tiny glass blowing. And I'll pinch that down as I'm turning it to give it a nice twist to a point. Tiny point. So now that this is getting hot I can start poking those ends down towards the center. Let's get one more round in there of pulling that dichro towards the center of the axis. Let's see, pull a, little, pull a little farther. Let's do it one more time. Now, I'm just going to get the last couple bits where I was uneven. There we go. We pulled it all together real nice. Nicely. Now, I could go ahead and put a handle on this end, a punty, and then go clean up this other end, but I'm going to clean this end up first while I'm here to avoid having to pass it back and forth. 
too many extra times. I'm not going to take off a lot of glass here. I'm going to start pinching this a little bit and pull it out. And then I'm going to make myself a parting line with the scissors. And then I'm going to twist as I bring that down to a point. And then I'm going to crack it off. And let's see what the end looks like. Let's get it in there. Magnifying glass. You can't tell if I pulled all the dichro to a point. So, because it's kind of rough. So I'm going to heat it up and let it surface tension smooth it. And then I, I can examine it a little bit more. Now that it's heated up, you can see the twist. And it looks pretty cool, but I'm going to take a little bit more glass out of there. You can see I'm just taking a little bit from the center. Get those points. So as I pull this out, everything else is coming through like a funnel. I'll leave a little nub there, heat back a little bit further, and I'm going to use my jacks to uh, pinch off another little section to try to clean up that end to a nice spiral that meets at a point that looks better and more defined than that last one, which was okay, but not, not great. Now let's heat that up, and then we'll, I'll show it to you. You know, I'll look at it in the camera, and I think we'll see lines of orange coming together a little bit more, like that. Oh, and if you look at it, it looks like an asterisk from the side, which is going to give it a, a little 3D lobed look. Alright, so now, that end is pretty nice. I'm going to start heating the whole marble back up. And then I'm going to attach a steel handle to this side. Then I'm going to detach this side and do the same thing on this end as I just did on that end. Once both ends are cleaned up and pulled to a point, then I'm going to give them a little bit of a twist by putting the handle on either side again. So I could put some twist in it now, but because one end has a tight end and the other end has a open end, it would not spin evenly probably. I could probably get it to go, especially if I took my time. But I have a different end goal for this. I want to get both ends the same and then I'm going to part a twist about 50% of the way around. Then I'm going to switch my punties 90 degrees and twist it on a different axis. Just because I like that look. I call that a torsion. Like a tension being preserved forever in the marble. You can see the hole in the middle where that handle was. And those lobes of orange are actually the hot dichroic that are going to come together. One more time, and then we'll show you. They're almost together at the end. Just a few little pokes here and there, and some that were fall, not getting dragged in. Now I'm going to pull a little bit out from the end.
Now I'm going to make a parting line and clean up that end. So I'm going to find the place where my line is going to go in and I start very gently. Then I get a little more aggressive and put that line in there and then when it gets to just a small point left, I can Now my middle portion of the marble is not quite even, so I'm just going to heat it and let it pull together for like a minute. Then once the heat is even and it's starting to pull together, I'm going to just give it a little tweak in the marble molds to sphere it up a bit. see still more cylindrical than spherical you can see some of the ripples where those grooves of clear I filled in between the dichro were not all consistent a little bit off so it's evening out now Actually improved quite a bit just to, just with heating and turning. If I was patient enough, I could with just spinning and just using the flame, I could make this almost a perfect sphere. But I have some more twisting and stuff I want to do on this marble, so. And we don't have all day. The next project awaits. All right, I turned up my flame a little bit. So that was going up a little on the slow side. So when I'm going through my marble molds, I start with a hemisphere that's bigger than the diameter of my marble, and then I go to one that's smaller where I'm just using the rim. And that gets it much more spherical, much more quickly. Now I can put my steel handle back on the other side. The pan take a little bit, so I'm gonna let it stretch out. Whenever I put the steel handles in, I don't like to have my marble behind it because debris from this metal handle flames off and will stick to the clear surface. So I let the flame sort of clean off any debris first. My marble not in there. All right, now I have a handle on each side and I'm gonna give some twist to the whole marble. So you can see those stripes start to spin around like a spring. There we go, let's try it for another 20 seconds. I'm doing a lot of freewheeling here just to keep the heat even, but I am using one of my hands as like a little clutch in the freewheeling to give it a little grab, like five degrees of spin I'm not letting happen on one hand, but I'm happening on the other hand, and it's starting to give a spin into the marble. You can see those stripes of dichroic starting to wind around. The thing you have to watch out for when you're spinning a marble like this lampwork style is that the ends are going to spin too much and the middle is not going to spin at all. So I'm focusing most of my heat in the middle. The ends are going to get their spin, but I want the middle 
to look like it is getting in on the action. Some spinning fun. And it is for that. Alright. That is enough spin on that axis. I'm going to heat this punty in this hand and pull it out from the surface of the marble. Now I'm going to just give it a little tweak in the marble molds to make it spherical. So, yes. Now I'm going to attach a handle 90 degrees off from this first one. So I need to get this hot. I need to get the surface hot enough to accept this and pour in slightly. Okay? And then I can heat the existing one in this hand so that it comes off. So I heat the metal basically more so than the glass. You see it wants to come out. Okay. It does. Quench that. Now, it's a little crooked, so I'm going to let it straighten up. Then I'm going to improve the sphericalness before I start spinning it on its new axis. And this marble needs a nice even heat all the way through so that I can spin it the next time and the spin is even throughout the whole, at all the latitudes of this marble. So I'm just giving it a light press in a mold that's a slightly larger diameter, and then a little bit of a spin in one that's smaller. And let's look at it. So the surface is ripply. That's okay. The ripples come from the surface chilling quickly in the graphite, which pulls a lot of heat out of the marble. I'm going to improve the sphericalness a little bit more by reheating it. I'm using gravity, spinning, heat, and pressure, all in conjunction. And now my model is spherical. And you can see there's our initial axis along this way of the spin that we imparted. Now we've changed our axis. And we'll attach to the other side. And now we're going to give it a spin maybe halfway around in total. If you spin it too much, you're going to make your design elements thin and they'll look like stripes, and you won't see, you won't be able to follow the stripes when they're spinning and see that it's all part, each stripe goes all the way from pole to pole, but also around. So instead of traveling over half of the surface area of the sphere, we've stretched it out so it's covering more than one whole, several halves of that sphere. So like they went from the North Pole to the South Pole, but now they're really getting diverted to different countries along the way. Alright, so I started to put the spin in on the other axis. on one pole, one of the new axis, than the other, so I'm just correcting it. I'm a little crooked because I'm always turning this way to show you guys in the camera now. So that's a good... Oh, 
always nice to have new things to adjust to. Keep your mind and your technique flexible and agile. I finished my twisting, my last spin, the torsion of this swirl. And I just melted off one handle. Now I'm going to improve the sphericalness of like this two-thirds of the marble that's not attached. The first thing I'm going to do is get mostly spherical, getting the whole marble hot. I'm going to go from a larger diameter marble mold to a smaller one. Only be for like four or five seconds the whole experience. Bigger. Just a tweak and then a smaller one. There it is. And I'm very happy with that. So now I'm going to take all the chill marks, the ripples, out of the surface. And there's some imperfection in the surface. It got a little bit oblate pushed in this way. So I'm going to angle it down so that I can stretch out a little bit. As I'm letting the heat and surface tension remove those surface ripples. Now it stretched a little, and I'm happy with that. I'm going to let it calm down. And then get myself a cherry wood marble mold. have in water, and I'm just going to use the rim of those moles, each rim I'm going to use for just like three or four seconds, I'll use a few of those, and we got nice and spherical and nice and smooth on that side. Now my last attachment point will be a glass rod, so I got a clear, clean clear rod. This rod's been a putty before, so I'm going to tweeze off the end so it's clean. I'm going to reshape this glass rod to a point. I'm going to get the marble just the right temperature and the punky handle just the right temperature. And then I'm going to touch them together so that I get a Seal, but not a fusion. Now, I'm going to heat my last steel attachment handle, punty. Pull that out, taking some glass with it. So that means I'm not leaving any crap in my marble. And now, I will heat. Now, I'm going to do this side of the marble. So the first thing I'm going to do is heat it, that two-thirds that's unattached from the glass handle that I have on there. I'm going to run it through the graphite molds, large hemisphere, then small hemisphere. First one, just roughing it out, giving it a little persuasion. And then the smaller one will be just using the rim, and as I change the axis of rotation, using that smaller diameter rim is going to make my marble very spherical. And I'm not pushing into that mold. I'm using the things I mentioned before. The heat of the glass, gravity, the spin that I'm imparting to it, and the mold, and some pressure in combination. And it's a feel has to do with the temperature of the glass you're working, the viscosity of the glass you're working, the size of the gather that you're working with. It's very important. Larger pieces you can really push around. Smaller pieces you almost have to rely completely on surface tension and heat and spinning. You can't move them much at all. Alright, here's our marble. I 
I'm just letting it calm down. Seeing some change in the angle. Correct any sloping on surfaces. And now I'm going to use my cherry wood mold once again. You can see if it continues to spin like that, you know it is spherical. Now I'm going to use my glass blowing jacks, scissors. I'm going to chill my final attachment point, this clear glass rod and the marble, on a fireproof, proof, fireproof, fireproof <laughs> board. <coughs> and I'm just going to tap it and it comes off. Now I'm going to clean any soot out of my torch nozzles. And I'm going to heat that last connection point so that its surface merges into the smooth, spherical nature of my marble. I heat it strongly and then I back off. Strongly, then back off. I want to get that area hot enough to move, but not so hot that I'm oxidizing the glass or making any surface problems worse. So now I have a tweezer that I've made out of a piece of wire. I'm going to heat it till it's orange, let it go black, and then that's the perfect temperature for picking up my marble off of that fireproof plate and transferring it to my annealing oven. There we go, all finished marble. Now it just has to stay in the annealing oven at about 970 degrees for one hour for every quarter inch of thickness. So if the marble is spherical, the, the, the depth at which it goes, if it's one inch in depth, then it would be a quarter inch around one time, twice, so two hours for a one inch marble. That's probably pretty good for up into about a one and three sixteenths marble, which I think that is. And then I will gradually over another hour or two turn that temperature down. So, now that that's done, I've quenched all anything hot on my bench. I have little tiny marbles left over from that I from uh, cleaning up the ends of those. And I'm just going to purge the lines of my torch tank because I'm not going to use it anymore today. So I'm going to turn off my oxygen high side valve. I'm going to zero out the low side valve. I'm going to close the needle valve on my torch. I'm going to do the same with my propane. Big valve off. Let the gas burn out of the line. Well, it's just about gone. Turn down the low side valve and then turn down the needle valve. And we're we'll close out. I just have to close off the or turn off the annealer and steps. Some people have computers to uh, control the step down for their annealing ovens. I'm pretty low tech for the, my smaller marbles in that it, it's all by feel. I know my equipment pretty well um, as I've made it myself and I've used iterations of the same uh, design for uh, 20 some years. Um, it's always nice to try new equipment. I've got three or four other ones that I use throughout the year, but the one I'm using right now for marbles and beads is pretty spiffy. Um, you saw it in the pre-show, and if you ever want to see it better, leave me a comment, and I'll make sure to show it in more detail in future demonstrations. All right, thanks. Have a good night.